brethren, welcome to Mountain Experience Year 2022. Uh, we pray that um, as we spend time with God this season, especially in a set time, I pray that our time that God has allocated to us, even if it has passed, by mercies, God will grant us the grace for it to restart again. And if we have missed our time, God will lead us directly to the place where we can be back into the time He has allotted for us. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify your name. We thank you for a time out in your presence, a time to listen to you, a time to learn from you, a time to become like you. Father, we declare the Mountain Experience 2022 open. We ask that the angels from heaven, the host of heaven, and heaven itself to be open unto us this season in Jesus' name. We ask that we will not do anything by human thinking and human way. Rather, we are submitted totally to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. In this season, we ask that, Father, all that you want us to know, grant us the grace to hear it, grant us the grace to know it, and grant us the grace to understand it. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. This evening, we are starting with the burden for the Mountain Experience 2022. And we are taking the text from the book of John chapter 23, Sorry, John chapter 2, verse 3 and verse 4. John chapter 2, verse 3 and verse 4. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine her is not yet come. That's the Bible reading that we are looking at. And um, let's look into the burden that God has for us. Of course, Jesus didn't turn water into alcohol, but into a party harmless wine. But the simple-hearted reader could easily be misled by wrong interpretation from mischievous teachers. I want us to know that Jesus, right from the beginning of his life, was brought in the way of the Lord. His father, Joseph, was a man who has the ability to hear from God. So he was able to hear that his wife was pregnant of the Holy Spirit and he was able to decipher that the Holy Spirit was speaking the truth. And when he discovered that his wife was pregnant, he wasn't uh, all of a sudden afraid, thinking that she's deceiving him because he had the grace to hear from God. So he could know that uh, his wife actually got the Holy Spirit. And also he had a mother who was able to hear from the Holy Spirit that she's going to get pregnant without a man and she trusts enough to believe that such can happen to her. And in the, uh, in, in the traditional religious setting of the Jews then, it is a clear thing that once God has chosen you to be a prophet, once God has called you to be a prophet, you do not take strong drinks. Razor doesn't go onto your head. There are certain things that are expected of everyone that have been set aside as a prophet. So when the mother of Jesus was bringing him up, she brought him up in the way of the Lord. His father too being a religious man, they both brought Jesus up in the way of the Lord. The Bible says, and he grew up in strength and in wisdom. So he grew up in the wisdom of the, of the Lord. He grew up in the setting that is religious and it was earmarked as a prophet unto God by experience. They didn't really understand fully the context of Messiah. They didn't understand fully the context of what he's coming to do. It wasn't so clear. But they know that God has earmarked this one as a prophet. So the mother of Jesus will never tell a prophet to convert water into alcohol because he knows that he's not supposed to move their alcohol. He's not supposed to have anything to do with aqua or with strong drinks. And that's why the Bible differentiates between uh, wine and strong drink. Strong drink is actually an aqua. So Jesus did not turn water to, to aqua. He turned it to a harmless party wine. And, um, but today, of course, a lot of people have tried to twist that statement. They've tried to turn the statement because Jesus did that that day. 
But we should understand that Jesus never planned to turn water to wine so that we could be confused at a certain time as to whether we are to take wine or we are not to take wine. Many of us are confused. Some of us are confused actually. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, when you meet even teachers and um, Bible scholars, they come to tell us that, oh, uh, wine is not, uh, it's not difficult. It's not, uh, it's not a sin because we, we saw Jesus converting water to wine. And a lot of people trying to confuse us. But actually, Jesus never had a plan that anything will happen that could easily confuse us. He has set his life in such a way that that life will ensure that every action he does has a benefit for Christ. Has a benefit to ensure that that character of Christ that he has, we will be able to learn from it and become the best we can ever become on earth. So what happened in that situation? That a, 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 an action of Jesus could now be misinterpreted. What actually happened? It, is to first go back to the, to the lifestyle of Jesus. We saw a lifestyle where Jesus wakes up early in the morning before everyone and goes to spend quality time with God. And you know, I was... I question in myself, okay, what was Jesus doing in those prayer times? Was he binding the devil? Was he asking for a breakthrough? Was he seeking for financial, uh, ministerial growth? Was he seeking for enemies to not kill him? What exactly was Jesus spending the whole of that morning with God? What was he spending it with? What exactly was the item of his prayer point. So I decided to take my time to study through the Bible to see the lifestyle of Jesus. To see that from the lifestyle of Jesus I could deduce what exactly he spent his time on. So I, at first I thought that okay, must he be uh, spending time so that they will not kill him and demons will not destroy him. But I discover that Jesus effortlessly was dealing with demons. Actually, Jesus doesn't even need to talk to demons many times. It's the demons themselves that will start shouting and Jesus will be telling them to shut up. So I saw, <laughs> I saw a situation where Jesus does not even have time to be saying, I bind you, I bind you up and down. He's just going and demons are shouting, see Jesus, see the Christ. And Jesus is telling them, shut up. I didn't send you a message to expose me. Shut up. I see demons flying out of where they are with Jesus coming. So, uh, it, the personality of Jesus naturally goes beyond praying for demons to fly out. So, the next thing I saw Jesus doing was performing miracles. And I begin to wonder, okay, those times that Jesus performed miracles, did he spend time with God to settle with God as to the miracles he should perform and the miracles he should not perform? Of course, I was able to see an instance where there was a pool and we have a lot of people by that pool. And by the time Jesus got to the pool, a lot of people that were there, Jesus never went to any of them. Jesus went directly to the one he has business with and he did his healing and left. In the midst of, I think, multitudes who are by the pool looking for healing, Jesus singled out one person. But I see Jesus at the same time going to the mountain and they are bringing thousands of people to him and he's healing every one of them. So I see miracles happening to Jesus. I see a woman sneaking up to Jesus to touch the hem of his garment and getting a miracle. So I am seeing clearly that the power for miracle was not what Jesus was going in the morning to go and ask for. There was something more than that that Jesus was asking for. And I can get that in the story of the man he met by the pool. And I can get that also from a statement he made. There was a statement that Jesus made. He said, everything I say, I hear from the Father. Aha! Now I understand what he spent his day doing. When he wakes up in the morning to go and meet God, is to go and get a timetable of the things that God wants him to say and the things that God wants him to do that day. So I see a Jesus who goes to God to go and receive from God a timetable of what is it that we are doing today. What am I saying today? What messages am I preaching today? What kind of uh, miracles 
am I supposed to do today? Where should I go? And I can see that clearly when Jesus went to the pool. He has been told who to go and meet. He knew who to go there to see. And he went straight to the person. Said to the person and disappeared in the place. I want to imagine Jesus sitting down with the man. And they are having such a quiet discussion. That people around did not know what was happening. So that he's not even bombarding him and say, me too, me too, I want miracle. Jesus just healed that one man and left. He has gotten a clue that day that the time for this man has come. Jesus went to that man, did his miracle and left. When it was time to, 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 to turn, uh, uh, sorry, when it was time to multiply the fishes, to turn a small meal into multitude, Jesus has gotten information that day. So when it was time for that day, he knew that somebody would come with food. He knew already. He was just asking the, uh, his disciples, where can we get? He knew. Because he has settled it with God. And God has said, a time has come for multiplication of food. When Jesus was in the boat, and there was breeze, and the disciples were crying, and they were saying, please help us, we don't want to die, we don't want to die. Could you note with me that Jesus was sleeping, he was resting, and by the time he woke up, he just made a decree. He wasn't surprised at the water. He wasn't surprised at the breeze. He wasn't surprised at the storm. Why? He has gotten an information from heaven that morning that I'm sending you over and there will be a breeze. And this is what will happen. And this is what will happen. He has a full information about that day. So there is nothing you brought to Jesus that was surprising to Jesus. Jesus was prepared for everything that everybody was bringing his way. Jesus was ready for everything that happens every day. So on this day, Jesus came to the party. And as a standard, that's the way Jesus does his things. But unfortunately this day, the wine finished and the mother came to meet Jesus. And she told Jesus, I need you to perform the miracles you've been doing. Please help them to give them wine here. And Jesus looked at her. There is an order of which things are done. There is a way I have gotten my instruction from heaven. It is not yet time to turn water to wine. There are things I need to do here before water is turned to wine. So that the story of this place will not be the wine story. It will be the story of many other things like we know of Jesus. The story of many other things. And so that when the future person is reading the story of Jesus, he doesn't come to the conclusion easily of just water to wine. There are all that things that have happened at that venue. So Jesus told her, my hour for this miracle has not yet come. But like every mother will do to her child, she will say that, oh, you are my child. You need to do something here. Oh, wine is a major problem in this place. Wine is a big issue here. Wine is missing here. Oh, this problem will be big. Ah, people will suffer here if they do not see wine. She was seeing wine. Jesus was seeing something greater. Jesus as usual was seeing souls. Jesus was seeing lives. Lives that needed help. Lives that needed to be touched. Words that needed to be spoken. Lectures to his disciples. So many things that needed to be done there. But what was the mother saying? She was saying why. Why? She never had time to go to God that day to receive instruction that says this day, yes, wine will finish where you are, but allow my son to have done other things before you jump into whinings. She didn't receive the memo from heaven. Satan quickly wanted to use the test. Will Jesus disobey his mother? Will there be a record of Jesus disobeying his mother? And when it came, the wisdom of God looked at it and said, Yes, it might be that these people will lose the first things and the major things I have for them. But it will never be that it will be recorded and a child will once say that, Oh, can you see the young Jesus? Who just about to start his ministry. He disobeyed his mother. Despite the fact that what she was asking for actually did not fall into a sin. Oh, so Jesus disobeyed his mother. So we're all going to hold it now. And start disobeying our parents. That didn't happen. So Jesus moved the hour of the miracle 
faster than it's supposed to be in order to satisfy a woman who is on his neck and say, No, give me the wine. If you don't have the wine, this marriage will be destroyed. If you don't have the wine, this wedding ceremony will have an issue. If you don't have the wine, the marriage will, will collapse. If you don't have the wine, people will say bad thing about this couple. Unfortunately, they collected wine when Jesus was there. In a hurry to settle the situation now. Oh, let's look at the physical thing that is happening to us. Let's, let's be, let's be uh, serious about the physical issues. Can't you see that there is no longer wine here? What can we do to sort out this wine issue? Because they were so physical on the issue, they missed out the presence of the King of Kings. They missed out on Jesus. There were people there in that wedding who probably came with sickness. There were people at that wedding who needed the touch of God. Majority of them in that wedding were not born again. They don't know Jesus. They had the opportunity now to meet Jesus and go to eternal life. Unfortunately. Because many of them will still be alive. Because Jesus died about three and a half years later. So many of them were still alive when Jesus died. They met with Christ. They had one-on-one -on -one meeting with Christ. Jesus was actually sitting beside somebody. The table of somebody was next to Jesus. Maybe their child is dying at home. If only the word of Jesus had been spoken there, maybe their life would have changed. Maybe that child that died could have met Jesus before he died. If they've just allowed that child to have met Jesus. If the couple have met Jesus, oh, their marriage would have been sweet. We don't even have an history. Whether their marriage lasted up to 10 years or whether it was one of those marriages that finished in 2 years. We don't even have a story. Whether it was a week after the wedding that the old thing crashed or they suffered to the wedding. We don't have the story whether the woman never had the opportunity to give birth. We don't have the story whether the man died along the way. We have no story about that couple. But one major thing happened. They came in contact with life. They came in contact with their creator. They came in contact with the one who could turn their lives around. They came in contact with the one who could ensure that after they died on earth, they have access to eternal life. But somebody was asking for a premature miracle. Somebody was so used to Jesus that she used her access to Jesus to get a premature miracle. Oh, I need it now. Please, brethren, what is water and wine? The wine they drank that day, where is it? A day after that day, the wine has finished. Oh, it is sweet that the chairman was saying after he got home that day, it is over. The next day, that wine will not last them till the next day. That wine is finished. Yet, they substituted the wine. For the presence of the king of kings. They substituted the wine. For the presence of the lord of lords. They substituted the wine. For the savior of the world. They got a, 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 a bad deal. A very bad deal. You add Jesus they got wine. And just because somebody. Jumped the timing. For the day. Jesus told her. My hour has not yet come. This miracle you are asking for, the hour has not yet come. There are other things I'm supposed to do here. There are other things we have lined up. Don't jump the gun. The mother said, no, no, no. I have access to you. Give me what I want now. Grant me what I want now. Answer me now, 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 now. And she missed out. And so also the people missed out. Unfortunately, many of them are happy. They thought their access to the mother of Jesus have granted them something, a miracle. They don't know that it, it made them to lose something more great and important. They actually thought that the access to the mother of Jesus, who could ask Jesus anything and could get it, oh, was a good thing. Unfortunately, they never knew that they got a bad deal. That they shouldn't, that was not the time for that miracle. And they shouldn't have requested for it. Oh, I want to imagine the, the, the bride and the bridegroom coming to hug the mother of Jesus if they knew she was the one. And saying, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you for helping us. You are the one that has the access. You use your access to get to us our immediate need. Not knowing that they got a very bad deal. 
what they got was actually very bad. <laughs> How could they have gotten wine when Jesus was there? Today, let's come to ourselves now. Many of us have not, have not taken our time to go to God to ask for His divine timing. We have not gone to God to, to connect divine timing. We don't know, we have no clue of the divine timing of our lives. We have no information about the divine timing that God has set for our lives. We have no clue. So we are busy running and rushing to get the things that we want now. Give it to me now. Give it to me now. Already, just give me. Just give me now. Unfortunately, you are like the mother of Jesus, collecting earlier than you are supposed to have collected the things that you shouldn't have collected. You were collecting at the wrong time. You have missed the timing. And instead of receiving Jesus, you got goods. Some of us have gone to ministers of God. We've gone to churches. We've met with uh, men of God. And they had the option of showing us Jesus or giving us a miracle. But what we have asked of them is just give me a miracle. Oh, just give me a miracle. Use your access to Jesus to collect a miracle for me. Decree something into my life. Prophesy, prophesy something to me now. Minister of God, just prophesy. Minister of God, lay your hands and pray for me. All I need is a miracle. All I ever wanted is a miracle. Man of God, give me a miracle. Man of God, give me a miracle. And that is what we've been chasing after. And because these men have access, they've gotten some form of anointing. They begin to use it to collect instead of showing us Jesus. And what have we done? We missed the timing where we should have grown in Christ. We missed the timing where we should have had roots and foundation in Christ. Unfortunately, a day has come. A time has come when trouble has started. A time has come when uh, the enemy has come with his own problems. A time has come when the Satan has come with battles against us. And now we are unable to fight because we never grew in Christ. Some of us became born again five years ago. Some of us became born again ten years ago. And what were we supposed to do with the access to Christ? We are supposed to use it to increase in Christ. We are supposed to have used it to get more of Jesus. We are supposed to have used it to grow deep in Christ. But what were we busy chasing? We were busy chasing miracles. Some of us have been to all kinds of mountains. Some of us have been to all kinds of churches. Some of us have visited all kinds of ministers. What were we looking for? We are looking for wine instead of Jesus. We are looking for Jesus for, for, just for the purpose of a wine and not for Jesus and the timing of Jesus. We were not satisfied following the timing of Jesus. We were told that we could twist the hand of Jesus. So we go to Jesus and start saying, Hacks we shall be given, seek we shall find. Father, you say if we decree thing on earth, it shall be established in heaven. And we keep pushing for premature miracles, missing out the timing that heaven has designed for us. There is a timing. Many of us have gotten miracles whose hour has not yet come. We have, we have become obstinate and say, God, do it. God, do it. And just like Jesus did in, 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 in the story of Mary and the wine, Jesus could decide to give a permissive will. Okay, you want it. Okay, you've been asking for it. That is all you ever wanted. Take. And you miss out on other things. The mother of Jesus could have asked Jesus, when is the hour? That would have been the best question. When Jesus told her, Woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. The best thing she should have asked Jesus is, When is your hour? Jesus could have told her, My hour for this miracle is in an hour's time. My hour for this miracle is in six hours' time. Let me follow the divine plan that I've been given. Let me follow the divine timetable that was given from heaven. It will be perfect for the couple. And perfect for everyone that read the story thereafter. But unfortunately, somebody said, no, it is not a sin. It is not a sin. 
So do it now. <laughs> it's not a sin. Do it now. She told Jesus, she told Jesus I am not listening to your hour story. I need a miracle now. Unfortunately, that are one step of affected the lives of everyone that has attended that party. Are you a man of God? Are you a minister? And you've been teaching the people, go and get it now. You have joined the get it now ministers. Go for it now. Get it now. Do it now. Settle it now. Have it now. And all the now, 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 nows. Are you, have, have we started doing that? If that is what we are doing, then unfortunately, what we are helping other people to do is to get wines and miss out Christ. We are pushing people to get wines and miss out Jesus. Brethren, it is time now for us to go back, retrace our steps. How have you missed the timing of heaven? Missing the timing of heaven is dangerous. Missing the timing of heaven is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You will think that you have gotten something, whereas you have gotten out of time. And what you have missed is greater than what you have gotten. Like God was telling us. There is a time where some of us should have learned from Jesus. You should have gotten Jesus first, rather than the first miracle you got. You are supposed to have waited at the feet of Jesus and learn more before that promotion came. Because now the promotion has come and you don't have time for Jesus again. Now it has caused you problem. Some of us got houses prematurely. Some of us got positions prematurely. Some of us got ministerial positions prematurely. You were not ripe to be a pastor and you became a pastor. Now it has become a problem unto you. Your life is not moving forward and yet you cannot, it's difficult to return back. Why? You got wine instead of the real deal, Jesus. Some of us have gotten healing earlier than we should have gotten it. If only you have learned Jesus during the time you were sick. Now that you are well, you will have been standing well. You remember when you were sick, how hot you were for Christ. But you got the miracle and now you are now cold. Oh, something has happened. You got a premature miracle. Some of us have gotten things from Christ, but now we have lost it. Why? You got a premature miracle. What you got was not something that will last forever. If only you have gotten Jesus. I could tell you point blank, brethren. If they've waited for Jesus' timing in that wedding, more things will have happened in that wedding, and they will still have gotten wine. They will still have gotten wine. Jesus wouldn't have left them to go away wineless. When they came to meet Jesus for the word, Jesus spent, spent the whole day teaching. Then in the evening, he gave them food. He wouldn't have left them without wine. If only they have not made wine the number one thing for them. If only the person that have access to Jesus in their life had not presented wine to Jesus rather than presented Jesus to the people. Brethren, how have we missed our timing? How have we gotten things that is not yet our time? Or how are you fasting and praying for something that is not yet your time? Because you have not gotten from God the divine timing. Isn't one of the most important prayers to pray this season is to go and see God's plan concerning everything in your life? What time is it that God wants you? What time is it that God wants to give it to you? What time is it that God has planned for your promotion? What time is it that God has planned for him to give you that thing you've been praying for? Can you go back to God now and get the appropriate timing? If you miss the time, you will miss Jesus. If you miss the time, you will miss every other great thing that Jesus has packed together with the timing. If all you have come to ask for was Jesus, if you have submitted to the timing of heaven, your life will have moved in a different way. You will have been very sure of making heaven because when heaven gives you timing, it's also con uh, connected with eternity. The timing of heaven today will grant you eternity tomorrow. Brethren, how wonderful will it be 
if we can retrace our step back to Christ tonight and begin to connect our timing with the timing of Christ. How wonderful will it be today if you stop seeking after miracle and start seeking after Jesus? Because once you get Jesus, you will get the miracle. But you can get the miracle and miss Jesus. You could get the miracle and miss out on a greater miracle that Jesus has. You could get something now and miss out on the best things that Christ has for you. I remember when it was time for us when we prayed to God and said, God, we want a prayer ground. Please lead us and give us a prayer ground. Opportunities came to use the little phone in our hand to start paying for at least something somewhere so we can have something. But that was not the timing of God. That was not the God's timing. So we were there. We had nothing. There was no place where we could gather. We had to. It's so much money to rent places. And many churches will not even give us opportunity. They are going to be asking, who is the general overseer? And we know it's difficult for us to explain that Jesus is the general overseer. Even churches don't understand the meaning of Jesus is the general overseer. They don't understand the meaning of that statement. <laughs> but when it was time, in heaven's timing, God told us, it is time for me to give you that place. This, he just told us that year. This year, that was 2021, I am giving you the place that you'll be using. And we said, thank you, Lord. That was in January. It's part of the January prophecies that came to, the, to us then. I am giving Holy Spirit prayer out a place this year. I'm moving into a place this year. I said, yes, Lord, thank you. January passed, February, March. If we, I didn't even pray about it again. God, God has spoken. I'm waiting for His divine timing. What I'm supposed to do is wait for His timing. And when the timing came in August, God just told us, go and meet the person. And I went to greet the person. And the person said, oh, okay. I've gotten a place somewhere. Let me take you there. And they brought us to the place, three plus of land, and it was given to the Holy Spirit prayers without us paying one cover. It was the divine timing for it to come. Only God knows if I've gotten somewhere, maybe by now they will have collected the place for me, and there will be issues about it, there will be struggling and things like that. It has, us, it has just been God. So brethren, there is a divine timing that we all have to wait for. A divine timing that we fit into Christ. Where we will get our miracle plus Jesus. Mary used her access to get wine. Unfortunately, the people around there missed out Jesus in their wedding. They drank wine, they were happy. And they went on with their problems. They drank wine, they were happy. So many of them must have died now and gone to hell. Everlasting damnation because... They asked Christ, but they missed him for wine. In what ways have you collected miracles? In what ways have you been impatient and gotten other things apart from Jesus? It is the time now to go back and correct the timing by the help of God. Can you go to God in prayers tonight? Can you beg God in prayers and say, God, I have missed my timing. I have missed some timing. I have just been moving. I don't know the exact plan in heaven of heaven for my life. You know, Jesus told us that everything he says, he gets is from his father. So every morning, Jesus goes to the father to ask him, what am I saying today? What am I doing today? Who am I healing today? How am I going to heal them? What, will I, what is my plan for today? And heaven will give Jesus a plan. That's why Jesus lived a life that did not have contained sin. Jesus lived a life and never sinned. Jesus lived a life and was victorious. Jesus lived a life and Satan could not find an error in his life. Brethren, if you keep missing your timing, how do you want to make it to heaven? How do you want to ensure that that day is, is not the day you will say the wrong things? Some say, oh, they are Christians. And that day was not yet for them to die. They died premature death. Why? They entered the wrong bus. They never got their timing from God. Some got jobs that killed them. Some got jobs that led them to hell. Some got miracles that now gave them problems later. Why? 
They didn't follow the divine timing of God. They missed the timing. It's not all about the miracle. It's about the timing with God. To God, there is a season and there is a timing. And you must follow that time. Jesus told Mary, My hour has not yet come. She didn't understand. She pressed forward. How has God told you to pause? Wait, my child. And you have said, No, I can't wait. Give me now. Give me now. Then you started taking steps. And by your, by your flesh, you got yourself answers. Are you a single? About to get married? Are you rushing? Have you gotten divine timing? Are you married? How are you dealing with your spouse? Are you patient for God's timing to convert them or you are in a hurry? How are you dealing with your business? How are you dealing with your workplace? Are you in a hurry to leave rather than wait for God's divine timing? Or should you have left that work by now yet you are waiting because you are afraid and you are missing God's divine timing? In what ways are we missing the divine timing of God? Has God called you to ministry and you are missing the divine timing? Has God not yet called you and you have jumped to it and missed the divine timing? For every missing of the divine timing, it is dangerous. The end result is disastrous. Can I beg of us this evening to wait on God for His divine timing? To allow the divine timing of God to lead us? Can I beg us to go into our prayers now? If you have missed the timing... If you have not even waited on the timing, you don't even know the timing at all, it's time to cry for mercy and say, God, I have been missing my timing. <laughs> I've been doing things out of time. I don't even know whether I'm right or I'm just doing things anyhow. So I must be missing you many times. Many places you want to meet with me, but I've missed it. Father, I am sorry. Please link me back to my divine timing. Link me back to the divine timing you have for me. I've been chasing miracles. I've not been chasing you. The years I should have been deep in you, I was chasing miracles, signs and wonders, handkerchiefs and anointing oil. Now I'm now facing major problems in my life. I have nothing to fight because I don't have Jesus on the inside. I'm shallow. I just have a number of years in Christianity, but my depth is very shallow. Father, please help me. Help me to get my divine timing right. It is time to go to God in prayers. Can you spend quality time? This session is going to, supposed to take us over an hour. This message is just about 40 minutes of your time. So can you now go into serious prayers? Settle this matter with God. God bless you as you go into your prayers now.